Hey guys, Jim from Import Image Racing and welcome back to the channel. On this week's video, we're going to be installing the Noble thermostatic oil cooler onto this 2022 Toyota GR86. Let's go. That's right, gang. Today we are going to be installing the Noble thermostatic oil cooler kit onto this 2022 Toyota GR86. If you have a Subaru BRZ that's 2022 or newer, this video is for you as well. The installation for both vehicles is identical with the exception of bumper removal and modification of the factory grill if you so wish. Depending on which grill you have, dremeling the honeycomb can drastically affect the flow through your oil cooler. At the end of the day, how much plastic you need to remove is up to you and your vehicle's needs. This Noble oil cooler kit comes with everything you need for the installation with the exception of two things. A new smaller framed oil filter designed to work with our oil cooler adapter and the additional oil needed to fill the volume of our new cooler and lines. With that being said, this is a great time to change your oil in conjunction with installing this cooler kit. Oh yeah, and probably the most important note to take with this installation, this being a thermostatic kit means the valve in the oil filter housing won't open until the vehicle is brought to operating temperature. Meaning on initial startup, the lines and core will stay mostly empty for several minutes after starting the car. So proper oil level cannot be checked until after the car is warmed up. Let's get started with the installation. Both the oil cooler shrouding and the filter housing prep can be done before even touching the car, so that's a great first step. Starting with our oil filter housing, out of the box, all of our AN fittings and bulkheads are going to be loose, so they will need to be tightened. Each fitting comes equipped with a rubber and copper washer that goes over one end, and for reference, our AN fittings will be in the vertical position, while our block off fittings will be in the horizontal position. After tightening all of our fittings, on our blockhead fittings, you'll notice there are two NPT plugs. With a five millimeter Allen wrench, loosen these plugs and apply the provided Teflon tape around the threads, then reinstall. This is also a good time to note if you plan to run any other external sensors like oil pressure or oil temperature senders, they can be installed here as well. Moving on to the oil cooler, in our kit we will find four pieces of foam, two skinny long pieces and two fatter square pieces. These pieces of foam will be lined on the outer leading edges of the oil cooler. Some of this foam will need to be cut to size, which we will show you now. Next, we're gonna start by pre-assembling our intercooler shroud. Now, this part might be a bit confusing just due to how many moving parts and hardware we've got laying around, but I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible. If you need help, I also have our bottom, top, right-hand side, and left-hand side laid out as it should be on the table with me facing the product. So if you need to pause the video, lay everything out, everything should look just like this. For assembly, we're gonna take our left and right hand sides and put them on the inside of our bottom tab. For all of our hardware assembly for this part, we are gonna put a washer onto our hex headed bolt and then from the outside going in, we will assemble that bolt, then secure with a nut. Once loosely secure, this is what our shroud should look like. Next, we'll assemble the top portion of our shroud onto the bottom. Keep in mind the tabs are on the outside of the sides. Loosely assemble the top portion with our hardware. 
This should assemble the basic frame of the shrouding. With the core in hand and the foam facing our body, we will install that core into the shroud. At this point, we will need to locate two bags of hardware. One is our chrome double thick washer and the other is our black 10 millimeter hardware. The chrome double thick washer will go in between the core and the shroud. For the top, we will install the bolt with the threads facing down, then a securing nut on the bottom. The bottom is where it gets a little more tricky. While we still need our spacers between our shroud and the core, we also need to install this bottom plate on the outer side of our shroud. So we'll go ahead and place our hardware into the holes, then onto our shroud. Finally, we can install our top bracket with the L shape to the outside with the same method. We need our thick washers in between our shroud and the core. Then our hardware on top of our bracket. Then it all assembles together. This is what your core should look like fully assembled. Keep in mind that the hardware is still finger tight in order to ensure for clearances later on in the installation process. Now that our adapter and oil cooler core are prepped to go on the vehicle, we can now remove the bumper of our Toyota GR86. Of course, this GR86 is highly modified, especially when it comes to aerodynamics. Unfortunately, our removal is gonna be much different than your removal, but the basics are we're gonna remove the top hardware, side push pins, and all of the bottom hardware while unclipping the sides and removing the bumper. Keeping in mind, if you have any other accessories like fog lights or running lights to disconnect those electrical connectors as well. For our installation today, we're going to be removing the air box. Now, depending on your modifications, you may or may not need to do that. In fact, we don't necessarily need to remove the air box, but we are going to have a much larger space to work with if we do. Next, remove the oil filter. With the adapter in hand, remove the O-ring securing tape. Be cautious to set both O-rings into the grooves before installing onto the filter housing. While our securing bolt can be snug, the final tightening for the adapter won't be done until later on in the video. Relocation of the factory horn will be necessary, so remove the bolt with a 12 millimeter socket. At this point, we're gonna loosely mock up our oil cooler core. Since we'll be mocking up several things all at the same time, I strongly recommend not tightening any hardware during this process. Our core is mocked up, so we have a great idea on which way our air is going to flow into our fender liner. At this point, we can take our metal meshing and mock up where we think our square incision needs to be in our liner. In my opinion, Noble gives you quite an abundance of this metal meshing, and I don't think the hole you need to cut has to be this big. 
At the end of the day, the choice is up to you how large you want to cut a hole into your fender liner. But I think we can get away with a little bit more than half if we make an incision into our metal meshing. With our screen in hand, we're going to take a Sharpie and mark on our fender liner about an inch in from every corner where we want to make our incision. Connect those four dots. Remove the oil cooler core to make the incision into our fender liner. Next, we're going to take a small drill bit and we're going to drill several securing holes for our meshing to attach to. Now, a little bit of a tech tip, if you're not 100% confident with using power tools, this might be a time to remove our front wheel so we don't make any accidental punctures. Install your metal meshing from the inside of the liner, securing with the provided zip ties. Before we mount the core, we are going to have to modify our air shrouds that are for the factory AC condenser and radiator. These do just clip in, so if you do feel like you just want to remove them and not modify them, you can do that too. But we will be taking our Sharpie, marking the bottom edge of this, and then cutting it with our blade. Back over at the bench, we can discuss the relationship between our lines and the core. These dash 10 lines are not created equal. There will be a shorter line and a longer line. The end of the hose that has the heat wrapped rubber sleeve will go into the engine bay, where the unsleeved end will attach to our core. Even further, we're gonna locate our short line with the unheat wrapped end and attach it to this AN fitting. Back over at the car, depending on your tools and skill set, it might be very difficult to tighten this AN fitting once the entire core is installed into the vehicle. So what we are going to do is mock this core up, kind of see the orientation on where this AN fitting needs to be. We will at that point in time remove the core once again and tighten this fitting. With our AN fitting tight, we can locate our longer hose, and with the unheat wrapped end, we can install that onto this port of the cooler, following up and behind the cooler. We can now attach the cooler, lines and all, into its final position. This is also a good time to note that with a little bit of ingenuity, we were able to repurpose our horn bracket to be mounted with our bottom oil cooler hardware. With the core in and leveled, it is now appropriate to tighten all of our shrouding and bracketry hardware. Locate the longer of the two hoses. We're gonna run that up underneath our headlight around the outside of our washer bottle and locate it to the most driver side AN fitting. Next, run the shorter line up into the engine bay and attach it to the AN fitting that's closest to the center line of the engine. Reinstall the intake and ensure none of the adapter or lines makes any sort of unnecessary contact with anything in the engine bay. Once clear of any obstructions, we can now tighten down our lines and our adapter fitting. Install your new oil filter. Locate the two Dash 10 hose organizers and place them wherever you see fit. In our case, we're gonna put one right about here and probably right here. Like I had mentioned earlier in the video, it's always a great idea to couple this install with an oil change and this is no exception. With all the oil in the car, we do have our additional court for when the engine heats up and our thermostatic adapter opens up that we can now top off our engine, but we will definitely be firing the car up for an entire heat cycle before reinstalling the bumper so that we can properly check for leaks.
While we're letting the car heat up, if you do run a Toyota GR86, you will need to remove these three pieces of hardware to remove this plastic air shroud. Earlier in the video, I also mentioned that you might have to Dremel out some of this honeycomb. Now, if you are running the Toyota GR86, the honeycomb seems to go all the way through on almost all of these pieces. Unfortunately for the BRZ, once we start getting over to the passenger side of the vehicle, this is blocked kind of like the top here. So if you do want more airflow, you will have to Dremel out on the BRZ like the one I'm about to show you. Looking good, our line is hot at the core, which means we have flow through the core back into our adapter. At this point, I'm gonna grab a helping hand to reinstall our bumper with all of the aftermarket aero that we had. Then we will top off our oil with the one additional core. Thanks for taking a look at the installation of the Noble thermostatic oil cooler kit for the 2022 to present BRZ and Toyota GR86. For thousands of parts just like this, plus tons more, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all of the best deals on the web and in the world. And we'll catch you on the next one.